But we, we do have a guest that's waiting for us now. Stacy. if you want to speak a little bit about them. Oh, of course. Uh, so as I told you guys, we're going to do the paranormal segment. And we have these incredible... Um, we, they call themselves the Hollywood Paranormal Detectives. And they are ghost hunters. I, I believe that's the proper title. We're going to definitely ask them. Um, but they go to well-known haunted locations. And they go ahead and explore especially those eerie abandoned places that I love. <laughs> um, so we're going to have the incredible Steve go ahead and explain the entire process of being a ghost hunter. And of course, guys, if you have any questions for them, please put them down below and we're definitely going to ask them. We're going to play the video right now. All right, here we go. Let's get some equipment out. Spare box. Obviously. Daytime spirit box. But I heard something. Observe. Please leave. Steven. Who's here with me? Highway. Sorry, dude. There we go. Oh, Steven hey. Atkin. All hey. right. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here with us. Wait, what is the proper title? Are you officially a ghost hunter? Is that what you guys like call it? Like, what is your title? I like paranormal investigator because parano if I'm a ghost hunter, it means I can't look for Bigfoot. And if I'm an urbex, <laughs> if I'm urbex means I can't look for ghosts. So I think paranormal investigator means I can look for anything unexplained. I can hunt for gnomes, werewolves, vampires, lake monsters, <laughs> and ghosts. Uh, so all things paranormal is my business, and business is good. Uh, <laughs> what got your interest in doing this? Right. <laughs> Um, I think uh, I'm 40 years old, so like most people my age, it, when you're a kid, you get slapped with Ghostbusters, and you look at, you look at the guys, and you're like, that's what I want to do, and then around your <laughs> teens, you're like, I can't do that, um, and and in, in your teens, you everyone that's a kid, they start exploring. What is now Urbex was just growing up. Um, you know, I'm from Alabama, so Sloss Furnace was a place that I, I grew up next to. Sloss Furnace is one of the most haunted places in the entire world. Uh, and if you're from Alabama and Birmingham, you know where the hole in the fence is in Sloss Furnace, and you know how to explore Sloss Furnace anytime you want. Um, so what got me into it was exploring these places as a teen and getting scared. And then around the 2000s when like ghost adventures and ghost hunters hit, it was like a wake-up call for anyone who is a fan of the supernatural. They were like, I can do this? I can be a <laughs> Ghostbuster? You know, like, to see people... Now, I can be a Ghostbuster. So it was kind of like, when the ghost shows hit, it, it opened up a genre for you that you always wish was there. So I guess ghost shows and Ghostbusters and just growing up. <laughs> <laughs> that is... You know what? I, I, I think I, I ghost adventures and ghost hunters definitely always piqued my interest. And that's what started playing in the background for me. Like, I'm like, oh. Um, but I, I do have to ask you because I, I, he has this, he has a YouTube channel. We have the links below. We have uh, his Instagram. So if you guys ever want to check out some clips or his uh, investigations, they're going to be up there. But he has so many. So I need to ask you, what is your most memorable location that you visited that just left an impact on you? Well, like we're talking about when the shows hit. So I remember like a friend getting a VHS. Uh, so it's that old that I got a VHS still, but uh, it was the, <laughs> the first Ghost Adventures documentary that someone had gotten from a TV station in Arizona and they had, their friend had mailed it to him. So I was watching the, the documentary where Zach and Nick go to the Goldfield Hotel. And so ever since I saw that, I wanted to go to the Goldfield Hotel. And lad, I think 2018 in the summer, I got to go to the Goldfield. And that was like, that was my Graceland. That was the place <clears throat> to go. Um, 
we got amazing evidence. Uh, and if you watch the video, you know, um, grin, smile ear to ear, <laughs> and I'm to stand in the spot where the brick flew was like, I've done it. I've, I'm a Ghostbuster, you know, like <laughs> I, I finally kind of made it. Um, and if there's anywhere that's a perfect set decoration for ghost hunting, it's a place like the Goldfield Hotel. Yeah, so Goldfield, that's number one. It's actually on my bucket list. I because of uh, the whole Zach's documentary. That's actually on my bucket list. If you yeah. guys, if you guys are too lazy to watch the entire <laughs> thing, just do what I usually do and go on YouTube. They've cut down the best parts on there. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I like to just get to the point. So if you guys want to check that out, it's really cool. It's the most fascinating thing. That's how they got their show. Um, mm -hmm. Let me ask that, a quick question. I got a quick question. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama, and my dad lives in Birmingham now. Like, I like when you said that, like, it's all commonplace. I had no idea that there's like the serious ghost stuff happening in Birmingham. I mean, we've been out and out of, I grew up in New Orleans, but like, where is this place in Birmingham? Like, what part of the city? Well, Sloss Furnace is right in the middle of the city, right when you go down 65, right mm -hmm. when you go through downtown Birmingham. Okay. You'll see all, right. all the okay. steam pipes to the side. Right. Okay, right, right. And that is an old steel furnace where, you know, men die daily. Uh, oh, wow. The old ca catchphrase for Sloss Furnace, uh, you, a man dies, you hire another one. A mule dies, you buy another one. You don't want to lose a mule. Wow. So, they, wow! so they would send men down coal chutes, send men down steam pipes. Uh, men were expendable, but it was uh, there's a very evil uh, steam warden named Slag is his ghost name, uh, and we would I swear I've been nose to nose with Slag. Uh, I couldn't see him, but I felt it right there. Um, like you were saying in the video you just played, that you you get that feeling. Um, mm -hmm. you definitely know when they're there and you know when they're not, uh, but Sloss Furnace, there is not a big ghost hunting community in Birmingham. Okay. It's not, I haven't lived there in like 12 years, but, uh, right. I'm in Hollywood, like my namesake, uh, Hollywood Paranormal <laughs> Detectives. Uh -huh. Um, but there's not uh. a big ghost hunting community there. Uh, but that, that spot brings ghost hunters from around the country. Real, but that's like still amazing. Like I mean, we and we still I still go to Birmingham at Christmas time, and then we travel throughout Alabama. But anyway, mm -hmm. I just, wow. Okay, and uh, I mean, there's got to be some experiences there because all the plenty of dead dreams in Hollywood too. So no, they're everywhere. Oh. They're all mine are down here on the ground. Mine are everywhere. my dreams are gone. <laughs> uh, one of our viewers, Sergio, uh, is actually asking, "What are your earliest paranormal experiences?" Okay, this one is, is pretty wild. Um, I was a kid, my first paranormal experience, and I would say my greatest paranormal experience, and I always think about this, and I always kind of like make sure I sit down and think about it even before I go in locations because it makes me realize how real it can seem. Um, I was little enough that I would crawl into my parents' bedroom. That's how little I was. Um, mm. but I'm old enough to know, I remember that I crawled in my parents' bedroom and I would crawl up on my mom's side of the bed facing the edge, uh, and I couldn't sleep a lot. I'd get scared of the dark and my mom had a couch right next to the bed and I would lay there and look at the couch. And if I got too scared, her clothes or laundry on the bed would start to like dance up off the couch. And, like, the shirt and the pants would line up, and it would dance. And I, I remember it happening so often that I would lay there going, I know I'm awake. And I would, like, look around and, like, I'm awake. I'm awake. Uh, even though I'm a kid. And it, it, it happened so much that I would even lay down and ask it to dance. Um, and then I don't remember, but once I started sleeping in my room by myself, got older, it never happened again. But more and more I think about it, more and more they become real. Like, yeah, I remember watching those clothes dance. So, like, just oh, so real. Um, That's crazy. Never, okay. Were you ever yeah. looking for a glimmer of hope by, by asking your mom the next day, like, Mom, do you use starch a lot? <laughs> <laughs> They're so stiff. <laughs> you know what? I had the same. Oh my gosh! The craziest thing is, I had the same experience as a kid. So, 
this is the only reason I really became fascinated with this stuff um, a little early on. I would go to my parent. I would go to my parents' bed to sleep because my the house that I grew up in, it was bad where things were just being thrown or they were randomly falling. Right. Um, it we would have guests over and then they would stay in my room and then they would be like, I can't stay there. Like it was pretty <laughs> bad. The only thing I, I, I remember and I've never been so scared in my life and I still remember it because again, never been this scared um, to the point where I, I, I want to move, but I can't. Um, I, w I was having this creaking. So my, the halls and everything were just tile and cement. There was no wood. They had, my family had removed the, the, the wooden floorboards from the, from the living room and the hallways. Uh, however, the room stayed as wooden floorboards and the creaking, like somebody was walking, was approaching my bed sometime at night. Mm -hmm. And then I felt this random pressure on the end of the bed. And then I felt this breeze of cold air and I froze. I, I, I froze so bad. I, I remember wanting to scream and I mm. couldn't. And then yeah. I finally, after a couple of minutes, I, I rushed to my dad's room and I'm like, can I sleep here? And I kid you not, I think I slept in his room until I was like 10 because I kept <laughs> having these experiences and I'm like, I'm, I'm scared shitless. And then my family finally moved out and we never had to deal with that again. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. We did, we did have another question from someone in the uh, comments that I do want to address. It's from Anthony. What's the craziest thing that's happened while exploring the supernatural? Um, the craziest thing is uh, catching my own voice on mm. a spirit box. Ooh. Um, mm. So I was at the Foster Bowl with a friend of mine named Frank, and we were investigating, looking for the ghost of the Charman. Which is, all these episodes are on our YouTube channel, so you can watch. We haven't returned to Foster Bowl, which is sort of, it'll be the pinnacle of these three things. So I'm investigating with my friend Frank, and uh, I'm holding the spirit box, and he goes, and he's he's a six foot six Santa Claus man. He's a giant <laughs> man. Uh, so nothing nothing should, should scare this human. Um, and I'm holding the spirit box, and then I, I go, ask it a question, Frank, and he goes, are you watching us now, Charman? And the spirit box goes, you got it. And I go, Frank, it said, you got it. And my giant man just runs. <laughs> just runs full speed in the dark downstairs. And it's just terrifying. Cut a year to the Goldfield Hotel. My friend, teammate Brian, is holding the spirit box. Uh, and he goes, as I said to my friend Frank, watch the stairs, Frank. So Brian's, I'm walking backwards, I'm filming Brian. Brian says, watch the stairs, Steve. And through the spirit box, he goes, you got it. But it says it in my voice. Almost like it, it took my <laughs> voice from the foster bowl and it said, you got it. And we all were like, what did you just hear? And he's like, I heard you got it. And I'm like, I heard my voice because I edit the show. <laughs> I edit the show and I play things in loop and I put everything together. So I've every EVP or thing I've gotten, I've listened to 20 times to edit it just right. But to hear your own voice come through, it, it, it just, I got, I got pins and needles right now talking about it. Wow. And, and so that's the craziest thing. So now the next will be, I need to go back to foster bowl with Frank and say, who said you got it? You know, um, and that, that, that episode will come up if quarantine ever ends. <laughs> is Foster Bowl like a, a concert, an outdoor concert thing? What is that? Foster Bowl, okay, there's this place called Ojai, California that is like the, the Bermuda oh, hi. Triangle. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking uh, of quarantine, how has that well, impacted the whole? Oh, uh, can you continue investigating? It, it's sort of changed everything. So I've got three teammates. One is stuck in the Ukraine since March, uh, and he can't come back at least till November. Uh, wow. The other one, uh, with some medical issues, is at a high risk. So mm -hmm. he, is, he is taking it safe and not coming out. Uh, so that has left good old Steve by himself. Um, 
<laughs> so like the last two episodes is I, I, I used some footage from 2017 of an investigation we just did for fun. Uh, usually when I do an investigation, I film all this B-roll. And if you've watched my shows, uh, I do this like kind of pro wrestling promo entry where I talk about the location kind of intensely. Um, and I didn't do any of that. So what I did is I went by myself back to the Camarillo State Hospital uh, which is the place we went in 2017, and I filmed all my B-roll by myself, and the, the school is empty because of COVID, uh, and I filmed my own intros, and then I used that to put together with the 2017 footage to create a new episode. Um, and and now after that, I'm out of footage, so now I'm doing these, what everyone's calling urbex, I'm doing these urbex exp uh, adventures, alone with my ghost hunting equipment which is that's the scary dairy the latest one you've seen um and that's that's because i can do that during the day i can do that by myself you know and i can uh be safe uh health wise um but not spiritually i was scared out of my mind if you can't tell watching that video uh, um, anthony had another question sorry i didn't mean to interrupt oh yeah uh, do you do uh assisted or paid it sounds like he's asking if you do ghost tours where people pay you and you uh show them to i don't know haunted places um I, it's never come up um i've never had the opportunity um if uh if someone, I think in my Patreon, <laughs> there's a level that if you contribute, uh, you can come on an investigation. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. uh, dollar dollar but, bills, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I would. I've, I've thought about doing stuff. Um, I mean, I got I got a wife, two kids, and a full-time job. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how I can ghost hunt. But Because uh, um, it's not cheap, and it's not ghost hunting itself doesn't pay the bills now. But uh, I would be interested, Anthony. Um Especially after COVID, though. It'd have to be, you know, I can't, I, I'd have to do a solo, like I'm saying. And all the big, because of COVID, all the big, I can't go back to Goldfield. Everything big is closed. You can't mm. rent out Alcatraz right now because it's closed or any Preston Castles or even Queen Mary. But also, I don't have my team, you know. Mm. Um, well, so I would gonna, think that uh, catching the, the ghost voice on the spirit box would be a little tough. They're probably muffled right now because they're wearing masks. They are yeah. wearing oh, masks. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Damn. <I>, Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this, though. Uh, we definitely, uh, in the in the near future, when all this COVID stuff is taken care of, I, I would like to arrange a uh, in-person thing where we do something with the whole podcast and we do something with you. Absolutely. Uh, well, I love it. we might have something in the works in a couple of weeks. We're still trying to finalize, oh. guys. It's going to be COVID friendly for sure. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be very separated from one another, but we're, it's going to make it even scarier. But we're still we're still trying to verify. But hopefully, if we get this going, guys, we're in for a treat for Halloween. So we're hoping right. we can get that done. Excellent. Like I want to hang. I want to hang with you, though. Like I want to hang with you. I want to. I want to. Like, <laughs> when when this is over, I want to go. I want to like. You know. I, I I hope that even with what we're doing, we we roll with you. Like I feel like I don't know. There's a certain energy that I think is exciting, and I don't know. Here's the thing, Dan. I will say this to you, Dan. The first thing I thought of is I wonder what do the spirits think of COVID? Like, what are they doing? Like, are they like, <laughs> are they, do they have to social distance? I mean, like, so I, so Dan, I feel you on the, like, for the first time we see eye to eye on a joke. I totally get it. Cause I was thinking like, what, you know, what, what is, you know, what are they doing this during this time? I, yeah, they're I'm like, thinking, where are all the people we scare? That, that same, that same thing are, are places that aren't usually empty, empty right now. A lot. And so the spirits are getting more comfortable. So when mm. things o open back up, are there going to be more ghost sightings in these places? Uh. They've been empty since March, you know? Right, right. Um, it, you, well, you know that, like, in zoos, when the people left, the animals started mating more. And I wonder if ghosts are doing the same thing right now. Ma mating? or are <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, anything's possible. <laughs> I guess That's it's it's safe. Two with Dan, <laughs> two, two with Dan and Dan. We got it. We got it. <laughs> um, now what? Okay, I asked this to a couple of our previous guests, but I have to ask you too because I I feel like somebody's going to be tempted to do it. Have you ever taken anything from one of the places that you have investigated? Like I know you investigated Janice Joplin's uh, hotel room where she passed mm -hmm. away, but have you ever taken something like? I take something 
from every location. Um, whether it's whether it's I get a small rock and I'll write the initials on it and I'll put it in my garden by my fountain, or I'll take I make sure I take the matchbook that was in the hotel room um, from my 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 big heavy hitters like uh, Stanley Hotel or something. I always take a photo and I frame like I don't know if you I got five by five of a lot of places I've been all around, so I keep them framed. Uh, but I I guess I was told by uh, if you know who Amy Allen is, um, I met her on a, a ghost event and she was like, "You have a bright aura, and that's why you've been safe and you've been so many dark places." Mm. She's like, "She's like, you have one of the brightest auras I've ever seen. It almost makes people want to." get close to you for comfort, um, which I always, people always tell me that. And I feel like with spirits, I tend to communicate with positive spirits. I don't think I've ever really had bad experiences. Um, I've never brought anything home or anything like that. Uh, and I always, everyone says I get, I get scared. Of course, that's the fun part, but I always have a lot of fun. I almost get like an adrenaline rush from, the spirits coming close to me because I do feel it when I go in places like, oh, they're here and they're coming to me. Like I feel they're coming close, but it is like like that uh, that clip you played when the first thing I turn the spirit box on it says, "Please leave, Stephen." Uh, okay, <laughs> like if you notice my face, I kind of I go blank for a second. Um, is that is the person that does that where they say right? That's called an empath, right? An empath, somebody that. Um, there's, the there's like there's visual psychics it means they see things there's like audio mediums. psychics that means they can uh talk to people mediums means they can like kind of pass between the spirit world and ours um there's mm. so many there's a big library uh empath right. is kind of someone that can feel the emotions so if you go wow. in this room that was sad, you'll feel sad. If this person died and they were happy there, you feel happy. If you feel this, I and also it works with real people. So if I go into a room right. of sad people, I'll get sad. But then I can also use my own energy to bring the sad people mm -hmm. up yeah, and right. uh, help. And but then I will take in their sadness. I've been called an empath before, but I think I think a lot of it is like personality and how you work with people. Um, and I've always just. I, if I, any group of anyone, I have to be the one that talks. Um, and that's just, it, I'm good with people. And I think it helps me talk to people and find out what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with ghosts. Um, I don't do, if you watch our shows, I don't do what I call this, the 10 boring questions. Yeah. Mm. What is your name? How old are you? <laughs> do you know you're dead? <laughs> what, what year is it you know mm -hmm. i i, I think go, if, if i'm a ghost at the ghost bar and someone mm -hmm. walks in saying the same old shit i'm not gonna go talk to that guy but if mm -hmm. a guy walks in and says hey where they used to keep the cows around this barn you know oh that guy's talking about stuff from my time period and when i was alive and i heard there's gambling downstairs you know uh, yeah. I heard the bartender was nice uh, mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna go talk to that guy he's not same boring questions. Bye, bye, More. bye. But anybody in this room get to play PlayStation before they croak? Ah. <laughs> Any of you get to try that? Atari. Anyone Atari? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Frog, there's the shit. <laughs> uh, now, you mentioned, you know, that whole, you know, feeling those emotions. Um, what's the most depressing location you visited? Mm. Um, uh, and you already mentioned it. It's that Janice Joplin room. Um, mm. uh, it, it's a weird thing because it, it was the first time my team went, me, Brian, and Boom, which is my main team. Um, we went as our team. We were in another group of like five people, and three of those people moved away. And one of them that moved was the guy that did the website and stuff like that. And uh, nobody had cameras. And I told the guys, I go, guys, let's form a new team of our own and let's really document this small location. And we picked Janice Joplin's room. Mm. And the second we walked in, we were ready to ghost hunt and film and produce. And it was just, ugh. like mm. we all kind of felt 
down. Um, and it, like, and does it, anyone in here need heroin right now? <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> well, and, it, it, and, and it, it's one of our worst edited episodes. I should, I could cut it down to twenty minutes now, but uh, uh, we we dress one of our teammates as an old hippie. And, mm. you know, and he tried to talk because we're not doing the same boring questions, you know. We dress him as an old hippie. We played some of her mu- music. Um, and I don't know if it's the there, – if you go to the Janis Joplin room, there's a big closet. There's a closet where they've allowed fans to write notes to her. There's these beautiful pictures drawn of her. And then they put plexiglass over it. So you open this closet, and it's this huge graffiti wall of love to Janis Joplin. Um, and then just like, am I feeling the sadness from the people that left their imprints on these walls? Or am I feeling Janice's sadness from looking at the love people had from her that she didn't know about? But mm. it's a, it's not a, a bad sadness, but you definitely feel that, that she's, there's a loss in that room. My friend Boom even goes, oh, this is the room of sadness. He kept calling it all night. Mm. Oh, that's how I felt, um, with that museum, the museum of... I might be no, I don't think it's the Museum of Death. The one that unfortunately just closed recently where they had Jane Mansfield's car. Oh um, yeah. There was a museum that had all those artifacts where celebrities had died, like he had rocks from Paul Walker's crash. He oh. had prescriptions from Prince the day he died. I don't know how mm. he apparently he collects them and, mm. and he put them in his own museum, but as soon as I walked in there, I felt not only really nauseous, I felt really depressed like almost suicidal like you, you feel these emotions when you go in there now is it because we instinctively know they're they're dark or is there something else we i i don't know i, I do you do you personally feel like it's it's already like a built-in instinct or do you think it's their way of trying to communicate or or some type of bad juju that's been left onto them well the thing about it is you don't know who you're communicating with um just like everyone in the room you could have a good person. You could have a bad person. You could get a feeling from a spirit next to, you know, Steve McQueen's car, but it's not Steve McQueen. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, or the items in that room could make the spirits in that location feel depressed. Or you yourself could have some empathetic powers you don't know about, and you could be getting their sadness, and it could be bringing you down, and you may not be, like, trained on how to use it, you know, how to get ready for it. Um, you, you almost have to be able to uh, have two different meters in your mind and know which ones are your feelings and which ones aren't, uh, so you don't get confused. Um, I've had, I've had uh, teammates in old teams that, you know, they're normal. We go to like the Whaley House, we get home, and they call me and go, "Hey, uh, I've never been. Uh, I don't want to talk to to detail. I've never been uh, contemplating things I'm contemplating now." Uh, but now I am and it's from the Whaley house and you know, you talk them through it and, uh, it's, it's not necessarily from those locations that make you sad. It could be anything. Um, I, Mm. I went, I went to one of those body exhibits where the the bodies that are all cut up. Yeah. Yeah. Like lunch meat. Yeah. Like exactly. Pretty pretty much. Uh, And at at the end (laughs) there's a buffet, um, but the, yeah. the, 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 the bodies are all cut up and it's showing like these skinned bodies or skeletons playing sports and stuff like that. I got oh, halfway, what? it's, 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 uh, it's just, a, it's like a science exhibit almost. Uh, and body I went, work, yeah, body work yeah. or something like that. And, yeah. and it, it's there. like bodies without their skins or it's like full, just nervous systems. Mm, right, um, right. But I, right in the middle of the body works place, I like, like, bam, I got hit. And I was like, I have to leave. I'm going to pass out. I'm going to throw up. Like, um, so at, many bad memories of Chinese prisons. Exactly. And I spent so long <laughs> in there, I had to oh, my change my name and move. Wait. I uh, was just kidding. Uh, um, yeah. Anybody doesn't get that joke? <laughs> Go look at, look at some articles about where they got a lot of those bodies. Oh, you don't want to know. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've been wow. to the Bo- Body Works uh, Museum. Is it Body Works Museum, I think? It's just there's, there's, there's a few different ones. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's really it's amazing. If you've never been there, have never seen it, it's really amazing. Oh, but be yeah. be warned, there are people. <laughs> um, right, right. Only in America, right? Only in America. <laughs> Do we make an exhibit out of people who have, out of people's people? Like, that's. that's <laughs> 
I mean, come on, we got a breakup museum or exhibit once, remember? Like, they, they basically, everybody wrote their breakup notes, and then they just sent it to a museum, and apparently people oh. paid for that. Like, I never saw never, that. I would say, never heard tell us such. That's what my grandmother would say. Never heard tell us such. No. Welcome to L.A. They make museums out of everything. Everything. Ice cream. <laughs> right. Uh, but, not to get off topic. <laughs> um, what, what, what is the like bucket list location that you want to check out what's the one location you really you're going to explore you know it's on that list well un until it was it was goldfield until i hit the goldfield but now um i've got i've got three maybe four that i always say that are impossible so one, if I ever save the world from a meteorite, I'm going to ask to investigate the White House. You know, <laughs> so that'll be my payment. I'll save the world. Let me investigate the White House. The White House is one of the <laughs> oldest buildings in the country, and it's like people see Lincoln, people see Washington, people see so many spirits there. People claim to have conversations with Lincoln in the Lincoln bedroom. So the White House is one. Uh, two, got to go to Graceland, got to talk to Elvis, right? Um, and it's closed off. They're not letting anyone do that. So everyone like follow, like subscribe, all that. Get me some big money so I can pay to go to Graceland, talk to the king. Um, and, and Disneyland to, to have Disneyland by yourself and investigate Disneyland with your equipment, uh, especially go up in Walt's apartment and stuff. That would be wonderful. Okay. Uh, Disneyland might be possible if you pretend to be getting married and pay like fifty thousand dollars just be like i'm here to get married i, I just i just I, I need to go to the bathroom and just end up at the haunted mansion well but then if i get this amazing evidence i come nose to nose with walt i can't put it on youtube <laughs> <laughs> um but they they say that um they've let people in that green room above the fire station which was walt's apartment is where he supposedly is still seen and his lamp will turn on so if i could just if you're out there, Disney, if you can see me, uh, let me in the green room for an hour. That's all I want. That's all I want. Please. In the green room. <laughs> guys, if you had to investigate a location, what would you guys pick? Hmm. Like you're asking? Yeah, I'm asking Us? you guys. I'm, I'm you guys. Oh, I, OJ's Bronco. Oh, oh. oh my lord. <laughs> oh, that, I, Cars are boring. Concept, the The murder site is pretty close to my my town. Uh, I've thought about yeah. going there and see if I can get some answers. Uh, but that'd be a true crime slash ghost hunt, I guess. But a true crime, but allegedly, <laughs> allegedly oh something. The glove didn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though he had the receipt, and anyway, whatever. Oh my um. <laughs> oh my Lord. But uh, that's another topic for another day. Hey, I'm trying to uh, think, like um in in let me see. Oh my gosh, like somebody like I think Frederick Douglass's home is in Virginia. Like there's somebody there's an abolitionist. Like for me, it's gonna all it, it'll first will always be some type of Black history, just because that's who I am. Um, but I would like love to go to. I think it's Frederick Douglass's home. There's somebody's home that's like in the Virginia Beach area that people go to. And, I, and when I was living in D.C., I never went. So I would love to go like there just to kind of, you know, get a get a sense of like, see if we could see if we could talk, see if we could chat a little bit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> look, look at look up the location, look yes. up the location you want and then put haunted and mm -hmm. almost anywhere will come up with a little list of stories. Oh wow! Um, so put it put in that location you want to go to, and then put haunted, and then look for a put in that same town, and put in paranormal team, and find a group, and then just just send them an email, and you could have your dream location right there. Okay, I'm down to do that. I'm down to do that. I'm, I'm down to do that. Thanks. Now I know. 